Hey everyone, welcome to the All Rides Legal Network. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, do we have a couple of doozies today. Um, both sentencing. Uh, one guy d disappeared on his probation. Uh, you know how Judge Stevens thinks about people disappearing on probation, that it, they're not on probation if they're gone because they're doing their supervision their way and not his way. And um, he really lets them know what time it is when you disappear from him on probation. And then the second one is just a lifetime habitual felon. He finally ends up being so high on meth and takes someone hostage from a mall and uh, that's I'm just gonna leave it at that but it blows my mind when these guys think that they can come into Judge Stevens courtroom and lie when he has all the information he knows more about their lives than they know about their own lives and he considers that deceitful and he lets them know it so with no further ado, let's get the ball rolling, enjoy the show, and I will be back at the end. Okay, please like and share, or at least like and subscribe to help the channel, and I'll see you guys at the end. What's the number three? That one as well, yes. That's it. The others are yeah. four through eight or five. Right? Yes, Your Honor. Right. Four, six, seven, eight. Yes. What'd you say? Four, six, seven, and eight. What's five? Uh, that one is out of Montgomery County as well. We had Jefferson, but it's out of Montgomery County. It was a possession of marijuana that was this morning. So, how can they charge so many offenses and then say, nope, I guess we didn't do that right? How many mistakes can you make? And they were dismissed. On the dismissal, it says they couldn't prove beyond a reasonable doubt that was the well, basis for the dismissal. They can make an arrest by, preponder by, uh, by probable cause, I guess. And that's a grand jury indictment's probable cause, but if they say, well, it was the gap between that and beyond a reasonable doubt is not a stretch we want to make. I mean, sure. But some people in an inconvenient situation, to say the least. Yes, sir. All right. So, in 2136765, you are Aaron Burleson. Mm -hmm. this, raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm any statement you make will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Yes. Thank you. There, any statements you make during this hearing? The hearing is what we mean, of course. All right. Does the defendant waive a formal reading of this motion? Are we going to take this up? Well, what we have left? Well, I requested, I filed a motion to set a bond, Your Honor. Oh, it's a bond. It's not a hearing on the disposition. All right. Uh, so we've got failing to immediately report to the probation office your address, your arrest, not address, arrest, uh, failing to provide verification of performing community service hours as required. He is, how many service hours does he perform? No. Okay. When was he put on probation here? May 5th? 
I believe it should be 2022. It says 23. Because basically, thank you. You're right. Who's who's reading this stuff? Is that right? That's correct. Do we need, need to make a change on that? Too? Yes, Your Honor. Only people's lives. We need to be accurate. Okay. In summary, let's try this again. This states that on May 5th, 2022, in the Criminal District Court of Jefferson County, you were placed on five years deferred or unadjudicated probation for evading detention with previous conviction. Are we all correct on that? Yes, yes sir. All right. So then you've got four grounds that failing to report your arrest, failing to provide verification of performing community service hours, failing to report to Harris County in person on certain dates, and failing to report by mail to Jefferson County. Well, let me ask on this one here, He's been on probation again now, we all know, for a year and a half, over a year and a half. So how many times has he reported to Jefferson County by mail? <laughs> how many times did he get it right in a year and a half, in 20 months? Maybe 12. Well, right out of the box, in 22, he's put on probation once again in May. So the next month, he doesn't report by mail. July, August, then September, he reports, I guess, by mail. November, he doesn't. I mean, September and October, he does. Then January and February of 23. And then... In March of 23, he's arrested. How long was he in Montgomery County Jail? A day. Huh? A day. One day? Oh, you bonded out on all these charges? No, I just bonded out once. Yeah, but you were charged with them. The other, they didn't charge the other, you. They didn't charge you with that? Two were refused, John. And then the felony was the only one um, that he had to bond out on. And... Once again, this is a, a motion that was filed April of last year. So <clears throat> what months, there aren't that many here, what months did he report properly by mail, I want to know, to Jefferson County? Well, and I want to go back because just like you stated, uh, this was uh, filed in March of 23. So from March of twenty, so from March of twenty three to the end of the year, it was it was sporadic. Now, if I have to go well, back, I mean, what's sporadic? Look, mean? If I have to go back and actually look, I do have my printout right here of the uh, of it all, and I have yeah, to sit down. Yeah, I'd like to know to what months. Look. There's only twenty. There were only twenty months he had. <laughs> I have to go through these twenty five pages really quickly. Because that has a lot to do with the bond. I mean, the, the very if you can't do anything else, you got to report one way or the other, whether it's by mail or, or and or in person. But that's the first important thing because if you don't report, you're not on supervision. You're on your own supervision, which is not the way it. Goes.
So going backwards, uh, September of 23 was the last time that he actually uh, reported. And How many times in the last so, 20 months did he did he send you a report to report. Jefferson County? I go back in that county. <clears throat> yeah, in 20 months, including this one. Year it was it was sporadic. Now if I have to go well, I mean, back what's sporadic look, if I have to go back and actually look, I do have my printout right here of the uh, of it all, and I have yeah, to sit down. I'd like to know to what look. months. There's only twenty. There were only twenty months he had. <laughs> I have to go through these twenty five pages really quickly. Twenty five pages. Because that has a lot to do with the bond. I mean, the, the very, if you can't do anything else, you got to report one way or the other, whether it's by mail or, or and or in person. But that's the first important thing, because if you don't report, you're not on supervision. You're on your own supervision, which is not the way it So going backwards, uh, September of 23 was the last time that he actually uh, reported. How many times in the last so, twenty months did he did he send you a report to report. Jefferson County? I go back to that county. <clears throat> yeah, twenty months, including this one. Credit for more than the so in total it was six. Six out of two, out of six out of twenty. Major. So that's eight. So, uh, if you made a 30 on your grade in school, a 30 out of 100, where does that put you? F, yeah. failure. In fact, it's, not, it's just halfway to getting a D. Community service hours, how many did you say? Zero. Zero. 20 months, zero. Now, you you were in custody for part of that time. Uh, and an, I don't think people are able to do much with community service while in custody. And then number seven, you failed to report to the Harris County in person. So we had you in a in a courtesy supervision from Harris County, right? Mm -hmm. So I was employed in Harris County. I don't care. You had to report in person in I Harris. Was employed in Harris County. It says you failed to on June, August, September, September, October, November, January 23. That's up to Not until the date this was filed, April of 23. So, I mean, how often were you, were you reporting? Twice a month? No, I was reporting once a month. Uh, that's not what it's showing, though. It says 
like September, you didn't go September 12th and September 29th. And that would have been about two weeks apart. I wonder why they did that. So it's June, June 24th, 22, August 29th, 22, September 12th, 22, September 29th, 22, October 14th. That would have been just two weeks later. Or so. Then November 18th and January 13th. I would put it like that's how basically saying how they would put it the next month. I got on probation, but I did. Well, you this allegation says you failed to report in person seven yeah. times. We know you failed royally, failing to report by mail. And you didn't do anything in the way of community service hours. Now we're talking. I guess the community service was going to be done in Harris County. That's correct. But you're showing that as long as he's been on probation, he hadn't been credited with one bit of one hour of community service. Is that what we're showing on the records? It's a, so this is a copy of the progress report received from Harris County. This is the section for the community service hours, and it uh, clearly shows that. It worked zero hours. Okay, what what is that you've got? Is that project. part of your records? Yeah, this is the progress like, report received. From oh, Harris okay. County. Oh, here, let me. Your records are mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let me take a look at that. Have you seen this? No, sir. Make a copy for her first before we see that. Thank you. <clears throat> She's uh, she she left. She went to Let me see the pre sentence report here, please, for this case. Somebody else want to thank you? Oh. There's a post report, I guess. Yes, sir. So she was here in July, went in July, June 30th, May 30th, so May, June, and July. This is a similar to the postal report twice in the same year again. But you said you didn't report on June 24th, but you reported June 30th. Mm -hmm. So, and then July 19th, that's the last one she had. This is dated September 22nd. So what happened on September 22nd, 23, that, gener that caused them to generate this report? Do you know? Uh, it was just a period um, to where it was an updated progress report would do, uh, was due. You know, just to advise of, of his progress. Okay. So they had, looks like they had been dealing with him for over a year. They accepted him on July of 22, and this is dated September, so.
Mm. So, it's, so does that mean the, pro the probation would have started in Harris County July 8th? What does that mean when you say they would accept it? Because she has them not reporting in June. Exactly. Um, July the 8th of 22. So that's when they accepted this case. So he had been, been on probation for two months. But they have Harris County saying he didn't report in June of 2022. And that was for his initial. Um, but they said he came in on June, on June 30th. Oh, no, it's 23rd. Yeah, watch your dates. Yeah. Because okay. these are all scattered. Yeah. But. Placed on probation May the 5th of 22. Harris County scheduled him an appointment to come in for an initial office visit May the uh, 31st of 22, which he didn't show up. Yeah. He didn't actually show up for his initial probation uh, appointment until the day it was accepted, which was July the 8th of 22. Well, somebody highlighted to the comment down to the comments at the bottom client has completed no conditions as of September 22nd of 2003. Which was over a year, a while on probation. That's problematic. I mean, if you really don't care, we we put you on a probation, hoping that you would put effort into it. But it's all your effort; it's not ours. We're going to. We, there are other people who need supervision who are willing to. Be serious and put an effort in, sir. And, and you know, I've, I've met with Mr. Burleson. Is at this point he understands now the repercussions <laughs> of not taking probation seriously um, as he should have from day one. Um, he is on a deferred adjudicated probation, which we're in hopes that he gets the opportunity to make it right so that he could successfully complete so he does not have a felony conviction on his record. Um, and I've explained that to him, but it's been a terrible story. Uh, how many, do you have any convictions on your record, sir? Mm, not that I know. I'm well, going to ask you evade. one more time evade. because I know the answer to that. I got evade. Yes, Is that your final answer? Well, just one? You're not going to be straight with me? Are you kidding three. me? I got three. All, You've got three now. They all are they a conviction or not? Do you think a misdemeanor just is something that shouldn't be counted at all? Yes. No, it's a crime. Yeah. You looked at me right in the eye. The first thing out of your mouth was none. Nobody more knows more about your life than you do, but you looked me right in the eye and lied. I got three. You got three. Yes, sir. And I'm supposed to trust you on probation that you'd follow the rules yes, and you look me right in the eye and lie on something like that. I had to think about it, but I got you had to think about it. I got three. Of you had to think about how many convictions you had, and the first thing out of your mouth was none. Really? I have three. Good luck on this one. What are you asking for? Uh, we're asking for a bond with conditions of uh, GPS murdering. Um, the I have spoken with his family. They are um, willing to get him caught up on his fees uh, to help him catch up on fees. And hopefully if the I wish, gets yeah. a bond, he'll... I think I'd trust them on, on probation. I just don't trust you. I You've do. proven. You I have proven. Do. You have proven that you're not trustworthy already to me, just during this hearing and what I'm reading here. That the court would be obliged, if given a bond and he makes the bond, if we could review to show that he's um, completes a, a good amount of community service within the next 60 days, um, just to show the court that um, 
he's willing to get it right. Uh, he just wants to have that opportunity. To he had the opportunity when we put him on probation in the first place. And to come back here and, and boldface lie to this court, trying to pick my pocket. But the thing is, I always keep my I always keep my hand on my wallet when I'm talking to people. It happens too often in this room. Which uh, doesn't mean your head's not in the right place. First thing is don't commit an offense. Second thing is successfully complete the conditions of probation. Did the state want to say anything? Uh, no, Your Honor, we'd leave it with the court. Uh, All right. Uh, Your bond is $20,000 plus a GPS device plus a drug patch. We got to have all kinds of prosthesis on you because you're not worthy of trust. Somebody else is going to end up having to pay a price. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other thing is mm -hmm. this motion to revoke probation hearing isn't being dismissed. We're going to have a hearing on it. And then you may or may not do your vote, depending upon what happens. But you have been a failure so far. And there are other people who want the chance. And like I like I say over 85%, six out of seven, or successful. You're not headed in that six. You're the one out of seven. Uh, the, the, the one out of seven who, who aren't successful. That's where you're headed. Yes. And I believe your honor probation will know. He was, I guess he's behind and $720 that amount could be paid before he uh, makes his bond. You got to get caught up with things. And financially, why would I set you a bond if you're if you're not going to get caught up with your uh, arrearages? And it's 1300 total. We just ask him for the supervision fee of $720 and we'll work with him with the rest or whatever the court, you know. Yeah, the 720 has got to pay. I hate to make it a debtor's prison here. Because that's not right. But if you can make a bond or if you have access to a bond, they got to pay 720 first. You understand? Yes, sir. That's a condition of your bond. Plus, you're on thin ice, as it were. I'm going to ask the probation officer one mistake. I want to know about it. You're on ultra, ultra high intense probation for me. You've been given more chances than most people. It's not fair to others. But you're going to either make 100 on this test. A 99 is a failure. With me, from what you've pulled already. And just to clarify, Your Honor. Um, with the by the way, by the way, you took an oath when you started to testify. Perjury is a crime. I knew the answer to that. It's in the pre-sentence, post-sentence report. And you looked me right in the eye and lied to me under oath. Bad start with me. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Just to clarify with the GPS, is he restricted because he reports in Harris County, I believe that's where... He Why is he reporting in Harris County? Well, he's not going to be reporting in Harris County now. He, he'll be back here. Um, they returned his case after he just flew off the record. Yeah, Harris see, County. I'm not going to let him back in Harris County. They won't It'll accept him. Jefferson County. Yeah, he's, okay. you're here in Jefferson County. And until 
this you're no longer under my court supervision or you have changed circumstances that the court will allow you courtesy supervision. But you pretty much stepped your toe pretty good with this. And that's what we call justice. It's what's fair. It's not fair for everybody else to follow the rules. What do we do next? I don't want to let him sit in jail. You know, uh, I need to know one way. We need to know what's going to happen on the bond and all, and this other payment, so we can. Here, so I'll see. I'll get with him to see. If well, you got a lot to owe people mm -hmm. who are cleaning up your mess, but it's for you to clean up. The only decent thing is to pay those people back who are fixing your messes. You're an adult, sir. How old are you? Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight years old. You've been a, an adult for a 30 year life. When are you going to act like one? This is the next question. You got to act like one. Okay, I want to review here in 30 days because I want some quick changes yes, sir. for the better. Mm -hmm. Or else we'll just get this motion and then you can move on with your life with your other. And you'd end up with another conviction with those three that you didn't tell me the truth about. Ironically, we're doing this in your best interest, <laughs> but we'll see if you can understand and appreciate and comprehend how important your change uh, in your the in your honesty, your actions, and your character. Uh, they're going to change or else you're going to be in there with the other guys where you know there's little hope for success. But it's your choice. Anything else? No, you're Good. 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 Okay, thank you. Thank you. John? Yes, um, Robert uh, Cardinal? You know, I had something with Audwin, too, and I don't see him. Uh, Ellie said that he went back there and moved to the case on Monday. He's no longer going to ask for a bond. He's going to ask for a competition. But I don't know what that is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 Like I said, it for hearing in two days. You were Mr. Cardinal? Yes, sir. Here. Cardinals. Here. 22-40284 is called the State of Texas versus Robert Anthony Cardinal. You were present with your attorney, Mr. West, and the state's attorney. Earlier, a grand jury indicted you on uh, September, I'm sorry, July 27th of 22, with the first degree felony of aggravated kidnapping. And in the indictment, it reflects that you have several, three, four prior convictions going back to 1983, a third degree felony of attempted burglary of a building in 1983 in this criminal district court of Jefferson County, Texas. Thereafter, that case became final. You committed the offense of a second degree felony of forgery, were convicted in 1987 yes, in the 252nd. District Court of Jefferson County. Next one. After that one uh, became final, you committed the felony of forgery. No, after the first one became final, you committed the offense of forgery and you were convicted 
on November 9th, 1987, as that forgery, second degree felony earlier. So you had two. You actually had three. A third conviction of delivery of a controlled substance. Three convictions on November 9th, 1987, out of the 252nd District Court of Jefferson County, which were three convictions for offenses that occurred after you were convicted in this criminal district court in 1983 for attempted burglary of a building. And thereafter, you commit the offense here, in this case, on or about June 12th, 2022, of uh, aggravated kidnapping. So you were facing 25 to life, weren't yes. you, as an habitual felon? Yes, sir. Oh, um, what in 1987 those convictions what were your sentences do you remember you know i don't know man, three, 15, three, 15. that's that's how you judge it's in the psi it's um i got a highlight here on something what in the pre-sentence report, uh, we're going to talk about this in a minute here. There's a forgery in 1987 of 25 years in prison and an escape in 1987, 25 years TDC. Does anybody know anything about those? You see what I'm saying on yes, page sir. three? Uh, I am aware that he received that, but I don't have the pen packets for those, Judge. Um, his right. report on his criminal history does show that he received that. And in fact, there's some additional stuff I'll address when it's worth an honor. All right. A pre-sentence report has been prepared on this case and uh, by the probation office here, Jefferson County. Have the parties had an opportunity to review it? Any corrections or changes to it? No, no. No, no. From the state or the defense? No. All right. Then it's made a part of the record for all purposes. So. There's a cap of uh, 25 years in uh, prison. Can I see the paperwork on that one, on the pad? Oh, I'll have it on the pad, Judge. I'm sorry. Does anybody have a copy of the paperwork? No, it's going to be oh, in the tablets. Oh, yeah. Let's see. So you just... so. Uh, did the defendant plead just to paragraph one? I believe that was the... the uh, uh, I need to know for sure. Yeah, I don't know for sure, but I believe that's what it was, Your Honor. Does the state know? It says plead I'm, guilty I'm, aggravated kidnap. I was checking my notes, Judge. I think we only did uh, count one. Okay, so he's looking at first degree felony right. punishment. Right. No less than five. Up to 25, yes. Capped yeah. at 25. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah, because otherwise if we went with the enhancements and there was... You would have much options. So criminal history here, according to this pre-sentence report, I'm looking at six misdemeanors that not including the
63 Class C misdemeanors. Six misdemeanors, illegal possession of marijuana in 73. Convicted, six years probation. Resisting an officer. And I don't understand six years probation. That doesn't I coincide with yeah. a misdemeanor case. But I saw that earlier, too. I, I thought then was... 45 days jail, resisting officer, four years probation, assault. That doesn't make sense either for a misdemeanor. Again, uh, this may be, I don't know if this is DWI, 10 days jail, and then evading arrest, 60 days jail, and driving while intoxicated, second, 365. So it's showing six misdemeanors. 63 class C misdemeanors, 18 failures to appear, 16 traffic, 15 parole violations, 10 public intoxications, two disorderly, illegal possession of a of drug paraphernalia. And then we get to the misdemeanors and I mean the felonies. And I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's showing eight felonies, including a forgery and an escape, date unknown, 25 years TDC, that we don't know much about, right? Is that out of Jefferson County? We know. Orange County was, was forgery and escape? Yeah. Orange County, you are. Yeah, only on count. We're only we only went on count one. By the way, so it's just all oh, right. And <clears throat> drug usage here. This uh, drug uses usage. The defendant advised that meth methamphetamine is his drug of choice, and. That's kind of important because in the criminal, in this investigation concerning the police and court version of the event that resulted in this charge of aggravated kidnapping, apparently the defendant uh, confronted and, fo and a forced uh, Hispanic female and a child entering the mall parkway, uh, Parkdale Mall Parkway on East Tex Freeway here in Beaumont, threatened them, approached them with a large knife, told them to go with him, and a witness in this case at the mall stated he was walking in the mall, heard someone talking loudly behind him. He turned around and he observed the defendant with the victims. The defendant was wielding a large knife at them, telling them to go with him and gesturing for them to go outside the mall. <clears throat> and police officers made contact with the defendant and at the mall before he was able to, uh, to leave, apparently. No, they were, they had just left the mall, the three of them and the defendant from the food court toward Dallin when the police uh, saw and arrested them. And The defendant told the officers he had taken methamphetamine about an hour before the incident and that there was something in the meth that shouldn't have been in there. Well, we all see where the problem is. Don't you want to take an session? Yeah, in just a minute. Okay. All right. Again, are there any changes or objections to what's in this uh Pre-sentence report prepared by the probation office. All right, then it's made a part of the record for all purposes. Um, 
what would you like to say, sir, if anything, Mr. Yeah, Carter? Um, when I went inside the mall, I had a knife in my hand already. I didn't go in there to kidnap nobody. I went in there to try to get somebody called 911 because I was either tripping out or the guys that stole my phone. That's the only reason why I could call myself. Thought you, thought you told the police officers you had taken methamphetamine. Uh, I told them I took some drugs, yes. They, you, they said you, I, I you said that, methamphetamine. Yeah. Is that your final answer? Yes, I think it's. Well, what do you think methamphetamine can do to somebody? Oh, man. Where did you get the meth from? From the Walmart. No, you bought it from somebody? Yeah. Who who was that? Uh, His name was Mm -hmm. Brian Mm -hmm. Gidry. Brian Gidry. Gidry. Does he have a store there that sells the marijuana, like a convenience no, store no, or something? No, or? No, no, no. he was just an individual on the street? Yeah, he's a yeah, homeless, homeless person. Have you bought from him before? No. Mm-hmm. Well, how did you pick him from the 7 billion people on the planet? Well, I see the deal before, where I was staying at, there's another mm-hmm. store right there, a convenience store. And he approached me that day, which is like two weeks prior, that he has some bets if I oh. wanted to buy something. So, do you think the methamphetamine you bought from him had something in it that made you yeah, act yeah, weird? Been really, uh, you know, there's a way to avoid that. Yeah, I don't mind. <laughs> you think? Yeah. You I figured mean, that out? I've been cleaning Good for you. Now. Well, you're you're not all lost there yeah. in your mental ways. Yeah. Because, yeah, maybe we shouldn't be taking drugs. Yeah. Especially illegal drugs that... Uh, do you understand yeah. that you can't blame it on the drug? No, okay, no, no you've no, got to take responsibility yes, for your foolish mistake yes, to rely on drugs for your behavior. Yes, uh, illegal drugs, right? Like methamphetamine. But can you imagine what this lady and how old was the child? What they must have been thinking. Yeah, I don't know. That's what I'm I mean, afraid. this was a little I child. The victims, yeah. Miss Espinosa, had her son, who was. Uh, he was born in 14. He was so seven at the time. This was seven and a baby seven. in a chest harness. Yeah, I didn't see I didn't see the kids at all. Yeah. yeah. Uh no, you were focused on taking methamphetamine yeah. and letting it drive the train. Yeah. Well, people, I'm I I'm sorry for them. I, I, I really am feel bad about them, but this isn't a public place. Yes, sir. That, that, can you imagine everybody in the mall, plus the mall authorities, yeah. they're going, who's going to come here to shop when you got nutty out. behavior like you? Yeah. I mean, threatening with a knife, my yeah. goodness. A, a lady with a little child, a little baby yeah. she's carrying, and a young child. Shame on you. For Do you think they're going to forget about that their whole no. life? No, probably not. No, it'll haunt them. Yeah. I just hope someone like you doesn't haunt them for long. I hope they can get past something for you like you because you are what nightmares are all about. You've got a rich criminal history here that I've counted. I mean, we're talking about now 80? 80 involvements of convictions that I'm looking at here, including 63 Class C misdemeanors. But when when I I left her, she was, there was nobody around with me and her. I walked off across the park. The point of the matter is, is not only she, but a witness saw you. And the police saw the knife. Yeah. And they said, yeah, they caught you red-handed. Yeah. You can't explain it away. No, I can't, I can't explain it. Shame on you for putting innocent people in, in that public place of business uh, in harm's way by foolish, yeah. irresponsible behavior. Yes, sir. We have a deadly weapon right here too, don't we? Yes, sir. Under the definition. And by the offense itself. Okay. State, what does state say? Judge, initially when uh, I got this case, I assessed its value uh, as an appropriate sentence for uh, 50 years. Um, it wasn't until this case came up uh, on one of the trial dockets that I made an option to drop that to a 25-year cap. It is because of this man's age, because the uh, 
my records show that he's 65 and my thought process was that with a 25 year sentence, I can keep Jefferson County safe by him spending the rest of his life in prison. And I'm asking for that. Um, your honor has already highlighted all the, uh, the things that, that are obvious from the, the PSI. I will add to that, that had this matter gone to trial, there was video that shows that he was using the knife in addition, not only to the witness as well as the complainant, but the uh, mole had video, which clearly shows him taking the knife, walk, walking this lady out in a threatening fashion that is the result of his crime, along with her children. What's frustrating about his record is where the what happens with the 25 year sentence and just trying to figure out why it is that we have a gap in time where he's not committing crimes. Uh, to my best ability, uh, it looks like we were safe from him whenever he received the 15 year sentence because it was that sentence that kept him off the streets and kept him from breaking the law from basically 87 to about 2003. The 25-year sentences he received, I, I believe, did not happen in uh, the referencing here in, in 87. What my other records show that I cannot affirm, but I believe is accurate, Judge, is that he received these out of orange. He received them um, in 2016. It is from that parole that uh, he basically gets out and then immediately starts committing these offenses again. So the end result is that we're only safe when he's in prison. I can affirm from this PSI, those statements I just made to you, when he's, if you look at page four, he, he immediately picks back up his drug activity in 22, which he admits under the substance abuse history, which underneath that highlights those matters I was just describing to the court, that he's already been to ATAR, Safe P, went to ISF right before all this stuff happened. So uh, I don't want to, I don't want to beat that. I don't want to belabor the point, but I'm asking that the court assess a 25-year sentence. Your Honor, I have a couple points, points to, uh, to make here. Yes, sir. Uh, number one, I, I I do want to point out the criminal history is extensive, but I don't think we can argue that it's not. But I do uh, want the court to note that the last time he was uh, convicted of a felony um, was in 1987. Uh, it looks like from the report here. So he's had 36 years of not having a... Uh, am I wrong on that, Your Honor? Well, uh, he had some misdemeanors. So I no, I said felony. I, I said yeah, felony. I, okay. yeah, yeah, but he yeah. still... Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's still, it's, it's not criminal. Criminal. He's still committing criminal acts at a pretty steady pace. Yeah, and his last uh, last misdemeanor, just to be fair, on it was in 2016. So, uh, uh, but his last felony was in 1987. Your last uh, offense date, I guess, uh, conviction. I don't know what date that actually was. Success of 25 years that we're not sure about when it happened. 2016. 16. But the offense was from 1987. It looked like. So. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, uh, Your Honor. He was offered, it looks like he's done two probations in the past, Your Honor. This is back in the 70s, uh, uh, a four-year and a six-year. And I know it's under the misdemeanor, and that's unusual, but that's what it says here, Your Honor. Yeah, um, that is odd. The, the, that's, I don't know what that means and what that's for, but but that, again, is the 70s, and, and uh, uh, before any of us were practicing law. Uh, were you too, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that's what I thought. I thought it was way before you as well. Um but you're right, he's never had an opportunity to do probation and to get some help and some treatment uh, uh, under a probation. So that's one of the things I'm going to argue for. The other thing I'd like to point out on page four is his uh, mental health, Your Honor. He has been diagnosed with depression, anxiety, PTSD, and bipolar all in 2012. I'm oh, sorry. I, I you're speeding really in your fast. speech. Yeah, you were he doing was diagnosed a minute. With, with depression, anxiety, PTSD, and bipolar in 2012. Uh, he is on several medications we have listed here. I'm not even going to try to say these these medications because I'll never say the right name, but they're listed in the, in the PSI, Your Honor. Uh, I think that's significant to understand his mental health. Another thing I wanted to point out is on page five under the uh, uh, TRAS uh, uh, screening, he's, he's a low risk, which is something we don't normally see. Usually everything's medium, medium, high or high. Uh, so they determine he's a low risk here. Um, so I understand the criminal history and and 
there's drug use that he's not a candidate for probation. But I'd argue that 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 makes him a candidate for probation in the sense that that maybe this is someone who needs some guidance finally in his life. And and like Mr. Hamp said, due to his age, uh, to keep him under guidance and under control and under uh, the watchful eye of this court and the probation department to see if he if he acts right. Because we know that he can act right. Now, whether he was in prison or he was out doing what he's supposed to do, we have we have big gaps. Like Mr. Hamp said that he was uh, uh, uh not committing crime. And I know some of that's why he was in prison. I understand some of that is, but not all of that was why he was in prison. Um, so I would argue. Well, and my question is, I, and you, you do a great job uh, with what you do, but sometimes you really don't have a lot to work with. And the problem is with that argument is uh, all it shows is he can commit a first degree felony after he's been acting well. Because he's been in jail since this. So he was out terrorizing mm -hmm. the people. He terrorized this lady and yeah. the people around her. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. At a mall, at, yeah. at Parkdale Mall. And, uh, and that was after he was doing, he was doing good things, making good decisions, but yet he still chose a bad decision. Methamphetamine, you know better. You went and sought it out. You bought it off the street. You knew it was high risk behavior. And a lady and her infant child and her young child and other people in the mall were all put in risk of serious bodily injury or death. What else? Uh, well, you arguing for uh, requesting the court to consider probation in this case, or um, and even if the court wanted to, to give him deferred probation, not for the purpose of keeping it off his record, because I think his record speaks for itself, but in order to have a, a bigger punishment range to use if he steps out of line, uh, then you have a, a bigger punishment range than 25 years. Uh, if the court is not inclined to give him a probation, then I would request a lower sentence based on the fact that uh, he, he has age, and uh, uh, I know Mr. Ham's idea is to put him into prison for the rest of his life. I would request this put him in, if you're going to put him in prison, at least give him some life left at the end of this. I'm not sure if he wants this. Okay, to would you like to add, say anything, sir? <clears throat> this is your opportunity. Yes, sir. Uh, Go ahead. No, I would very, very much like to. Uh, uh, I'm so right now. That's all right. Take your time. Uh, I know I did something crazy, you know, and it it, it, it makes me makes me think about it all the all the time. Yeah, uh, I don't know what to say. I mean, I, I wish I could talk to the lady, you know. Yeah, but I know, I know, I understand. You can't that. undo. Yeah, I understand that. You can't walk you know? back in time. Yeah. What I wish is that you would have made a better choice before. Yeah, yeah. You ran into those yeah, nice I mean, people. You can look at my records. There's been nobody ever injured since I was a kid. I never put nobody in the hospital. I didn't ever beat nobody up. I never robbed nobody. I never did any kind of sexual acts. All I did was get high, and it's been a problem of mine for 50 years. You know, I didn't have a good childhood. And I, didn't, I, I spent 30 something years in prison already, probably about 35 years in prison. And I can do that. I'm, I'm uh, institutionalized. Okay. You know, the, the, I'm looking at your criminal history, but look, committing a crime is just not a solitary offense where you only hurt yourself. Yes, you sir. hurt yourself, but you hurt other people. I mean, Drug trafficking would not exist if people like you weren't willing yes, and able to pay for it and buy it. There, there wouldn't be a market for it. Yes, Resisting an officer is is a is a an act of of violence and physical assaultiveness. Uh, assault uh, is harming or threatening harm of somebody. Uh, driving while intoxicated. Everybody on the road, you're it's a four thousand pound missile. You're you are driving irresponsibly. Yes, sir. And we and people are 
this people end up being killed by others end up in this court yes. as defendants who yes. cause harm to others. So it has its harm. Uh, burglaries. I mean, uh, you break into somebody's home, that's sacred to them. That's the most expensive thing they yes. own. So you're, you know, you're not showing an appreciation to uh, people's uh, lifelong uh, in expense and investment, forgery, forgery, forgery. Your forgery hurts somebody. Yeah. Someone is losing and being misused financially. Okay, so these are these are not victimless crimes here, sir. And this last one certainly isn't. I have a letter from you uh, that was part of this that I the court has read. Did you want to add any? Uh, and it's pretty much what you were telling me before. Yes, sir. Anything else anybody wishes to add? If not, I'm going to find then, Mr. Cardinal. You have pleaded guilty today voluntarily. You are mentally competent to do so. You understand and appreciate the consequences of pleading guilty. There's sufficient evidence supporting your guilty plea from States Exhibit 1 at your plea hearing to find you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of this first degree felony of aggravated kidnapping. I now find you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of this first degree felony of kidnapping. I am following this agreement. You are hereby sentenced to confinement in the Institutional Division of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice to serve a term of 25 years. The judgment shall reflect an affirmative finding that a deadly weapon, namely a knife, was used in the commission of this offense. These are not easy decisions for judges to make. But when you look at your rich criminal history and the circumstances of this terrible act of, of violence perpetrated on these people in a public, in one of the largest public places in this area, you, sir, have put yourself in this position again, as you know, by electing to purchase illegal drugs on the street like methamphetamine which, as you know from your experience, uh, can corrupt your thought process. But nonetheless, you are responsible for what actions that are taken during the course of that illegal uh, activity. I find uh, this to be fair and just in a sentence based upon the circumstances of this case and your criminal history. I just wish you wouldn't have done this yeah, sure. but we all feel a sympathy toward the poor people who had to endure and are left with a lifelong horror of having uh, to relive what you had to what you elected to put them in through your bad choices anything else that is all we're well, guys, that seems like a just to serve sentence. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Let's start the discussion in the comments you, below. And Please like and subscribe. Sir, and I'll until catch you guys anything next time. Else? Is there anything else? If not, uh, we are in recess until tomorrow morning. And stay warm, everyone. Okay.